Hello everyone, my name is Palescent Moon and welcome back to Hemicraft Season 9, Episode 9. I know we're at our lovely mega base location at the moment and it's fantastic, super comfortable to be here, but you know, some things have been happening around Spawn Town lately. So we're starting off the episode today by popping over there and showing you all what's been going on because my gosh. And here we have a wild dango working on the nether hub sorting through his massive chest monster to find the one block that he needs. Okay, I'm continuing on. First off, do you guys remember last episode how we did the Octo Drop and I wasn't sure if my run, you know, counted? Well, I did end up asking XB if it did or not and he said it did. <laughs> However, I think I'm too late to now put my entry into the book. I don't think they're going to be counted anymore. I'm pretty sure that closed some time ago, but hey, the run count and I'm pretty sure yeah so my run was 12 and we're pretty much on average right now and we haven't won so it's kind of okay if we didn't put it in the book anyway so you know it's all right but you know my run counted it was fun I enjoyed it but the main thing that I wanted to show you guys today is this what is going on to all of the pillars now at the moment. We have, I, has, is that Scar's pillar that's moved? I'm pretty sure it was over there before. I think this, this is Scar's pillar getting shot by Grian's pillar that is interacted or sorry, interrupted by Cub's diamond pillar. How tall, that isn't a height limit yet, but my gosh, that's getting up there. I, I don't even know. And we've got crosses on some of these pillars as well. We have docks that I feel like is leaning even more than it was the last time that I saw it. And it's, it's, just, it's just crazy at the moment. It's just crazy. And I feel like this is something that we really need to start playing a bit more of a part in. To start my step off a bit, I did do a little bit more mining and acquired a few more deep slate diamond ore, diamond ores, which is fantastic. Almost three stacks. And I've also got some regular stone diamond ores. However, I'm kind of deciding that I'm actually not going to put these in the pillar because they're way too valuable and gosh knows what's going to happen to it from this point. So I'm probably going to take the stone ones I have off, put them back in the chest because I'm also going to use them later by the way, and then stick up my almost three stacks of deep slate diamond ore and see how much th difference that makes to my pillar. Hang on a minute. Was there or was there not a rock um, on that bit of land <laughs> just yesterday? But green? Uh, your entity is, it, it, his entity is gone. Okay, well, uh, I'm not going to question that further. I'll leave you guys to question that further and I'm going to continue about my day placing my pods all. All right? Bouncy, 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 bouncy snowman. So long way up on this pods all pillar, pillaring up and running out the blocks. Am I there? Oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you telling me that three stacks of Podzol was not enough to get up here? I'm, I'm right here. I'm so close. Couple stone it is. All right, so I made it. Time to begin my little silk pick onto these things and not hopefully lose them down in the river. Bonk, 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 bonk. Does anyone else feel like this is oddly satisfying? Just those little tiny blocks, you know, floating out of the body and being collected back in and then the little particles. I don't know. Okay, I have placed the near three stacks of deep slate diamond blocks onto my pillar. And, you know, last episode, remember, it looked super small from the ground. I'm very curious what the length looks like now. Please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, it finally looks a little bit longer. It still looks, still looks tiny compared to compared to those. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. As far as I'm concerned, the, my pillar is almost deceptive. While these guys are going to be too busy, you know, trying to prank each other's pillars and stop them from reaching world height because they think that their competition is the largest, they're going to ignore mine because mine looks small, right? They, they're not going to see mine as competition and they're not going to try and sabotage my pillar, right? I'm kind of curious, how long can we get away with our pillar going downwards versus theirs going up. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think we can potentially decept some perspectives on this. <laughs> Shh, don't tell them guys, they won't know. My pillar isn't long, it's very, very, very short. Shh, it's okay. 
Well, now that our pillar is sufficiently larger and I have contributed my extra stacks of deep slate diamond ore to it, there is actually something else that I kind of wanted to do today. You know, we've been spending a hot minute at the mega bays, building up the terrain, building the fancy rocks and all that kind of good jazz, but we haven't built a shop in a hot minute. I know we have our shear shop, but that was just, that was just the starter shop. I didn't really intend to expand on that further. I have a different shop in mind. You guys might remember from a few episodes ago that Corralis had given us a trident and I mentioned in that episode that, you know, I was farming a few extras. I ended up with this many tridents at the end of the day that was spare. So this is on top of the two tridents that I have for myself. We also farmed about 1,074 drowned from just going up and down the Mississippi. <laughs> hoping to get the trident drops. And not only did I get the tridents, but I also got some shells and I have since already sold some to Iskel, but I still have another 29. And on top of that, I of course took these ones back from underneath my diamond deep slate pillar because I said that I had a different use for them. Essentially, I've been wanting to make a shop that sells some of the most useless yet very valuable items that people kind of want in the game. Also a few kind of useful items like netherite and whatnot, just, just really valuable stuff. And I hadn't built it till now because we hadn't properly established a shop district yet and something that has now happened recently is well the shopping districts <laughs> It's been established to be over in this dark oak biome right next to Spawn Town. And you can already see some shops that have popped up, including Gigalogs, which I believe is Ren and Corralis's business that's starting up. We have Impulse's like lighting shop over there as well. He started up. I'm pretty sure this is like Jem's little prismarine shop that she's made. And there is also another one over there, which is something to do with iron ore veins that I think Cub has also set up. So there is definitely a few shops that are happening around here and I think it is time for us to also add ours and officially you know, put the idea that I've had in my hand, head for at least a month or two actually onto the server. Now, obviously, a lot of hermits are probably going to come out from Spawn Town, right? So your first initial perspective is going to be this zone here. So I think probably one of the best places for us to actually build a shop is probably going to be right alongside this lake slash river area and build right on the shoreline there. I also have farmed up a few resources that should be handy in making the structure itself and I'm pretty excited to get going. So with resources at the ready and the enthusiasm quite high, uh, it's time for me to get building. Let's roll that time lapse. The shop is finally established. I mean, I'm not 100% sure on the design of it, but I think it kind of does the concept that I was going for a little bit of justice. I am hoping people do know what this is as well, because may maybe it's not clear at first because it's a bit of a weird kind of building or a thing to make. But uh, yeah, I, ma I made a dumpster as part of my shop to represent my shop name called Twinkly Trash. That is right. <laughs> Twinkly Trash is the name of my shop for items that people may not necessarily want, but are valuable to some. I'll be honest, it's a little bit hard to show you guys the shop from down here because you can't really see a lot from down here. And then I've got a, a banister that kind of covers a lot of it from this angle. You can see it pretty well from across the river here. But from down here, it's 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 kind of hard to show you what's up. But anyway, we have the giant dumpster there. And on the left hand side here, I've created a little bit of a small building or shop front to go with it. I don't know if any of you guys have come across like a tip with a shop next to it that's selling like junk that people have thrown away, but that's kind of the concept with this one. So it's a pretty run down building. It's got kind of, a, you know, moss growing all over the top of it. Got a little bit of green mixed in. It's got the usual air vents coming out the top of the roof. We have the broken or slightly worn down rusted sign on the front of it, which I would like to add some banners for a bit later down the line. It's got a little roof lip, roof lip over the front of it. And we have acacia trapdoor slatted windows. And then over on the right, we of course have the dumpster itself with also the opening lid on it. I decided to have one of them open just for a little bit of difference in aesthetic. 
And I don't know, I just thought it was kind of cool also to have a bit of a natural kind of like sunlight coming through the roof of that particular part of the building. And just right at decoration, we have technically like a pixelated label on the front, like a warning or caution label off to the side there, of course, with no text on it and some structural windows to really give it the architectural feel of being an actual building and not just a really largely made bin. So let's head inside and I'll show you guys the interior that has been made for this one. Coming up to the front here, we can immediately see a dried kelp block with a little tiny pickle on top of it. Um, I did it once again, I did a kind of a stream thing and someone came up with the fantastic idea that these could represent garbage bags. I love the thought of that. These do 100% look like garbage bags and I was kind of hoping this would maybe look like the little, you know, when you tie it up, you've got like the little handle of the plastic, you know, I was kind of hoping that, that would help. It doesn't really match, but hey, it still kind of gets across the idea I'm hoping. Now coming up to the door itself, I actually have a sign out the front that I haven't put my item frames on yet. I was thinking of putting a bucket and some bone meal on here to communicate my shop. So of course the bone meal is going to represent the trash and then the bucket is going to represent the bin. And I don't know, I thought it kind of worked as a little sign. And I think people are kind of going to get the picture of what I mean by those two pieces there. And then moving further on into the actual building itself, going through the dark oak trap doors, we walk in and we are immediately met with a kind of a like a warehouse type vibe that I was going for. Of course, I'm imagining because it's some trash type of building, I was like, okay, maybe I can do like a warehouse storefront where all these unwanted items are being sold. So we have a bunch of shelves with like mine carts in them. We have beehives, barrels, scaffolding. We have a bit some stone cutters for a little bit of movement in the area. We have some pallets also, some furnaces, just a lot of random stuff chucked in the shelves to signify kind of like a messy yet storage feeling of an area. And off to the left here, we also have a little corner with more shelves, of course, of the usual storage items also found on those ones. But I've also got an armor stand sitting there. One day, I would love to have like a full set of netherite gear sat on top of that, and that is going to be for sale. Personally, I think it's going to look glorious in that position when I get that set fully kitted out on that one. And if it sells, well then I've got another problem of restocking it. But anyway, that's something for future me to deal with. And off to the left here, I've also kind of got the cash register desk zone. Of course, I haven't really got a cash register or anything on it. But hey, it's a little spot for the clerk to sit. And then of course we have the ender chest for people to grab their diamonds as well for when they want to buy items. So when I eventually get all the stock for this shop, all the items are going to be in these shelves here and in the different barrels, which I will label. And then also maybe do some armor stands or something to see if we can display the items on the shelves themselves. But for now, that's kind of where we're at with the plan. But in effect, I also kind of wanted to add in a little bit of greenery growing off the roof with the small blossoms. You know, A, it can either represent stinky particles or B, it can just represent a little bit of an overgrown, organic, lush interior to the building. You know, me and plants, I love them too much. So, you know, green contrast, that's a lot of fun for me. So I added those. And then we've also got some of those kind of pole type horizontal lighting fixtures on the ceiling for the kind of warehousey vibe. You may also notice that there is an extra door over here and the fact that we haven't gone through to the bin section yet. And that is simply because I haven't made anything in here yet. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna be using this space for, but probably I'm going to expand into it later on with even more stock that people are less likely to buy, but I think could be a lot of fun. So there's a lot of real estate space for us to use with our shop itself. And for now, these furnaces are just going to block this up. So people do not have to walk into that zone. Something else you guys might have noticed when I first walked in here is the fact that I walked on some pressure plates that also sound like the they have like little droppers or dispensers underneath them. And that is correct, they do. I have a couple of dispensers with pressure plates on top of them sat at the front like a doormat. The concept for those is I would like to get a whole bunch of lingering weakness potions and I'm then gonna call them bin juice. I know it's a silly concept, it's not actually intended to harm anybody who walks in the shop, but I thought it'd be kind of funny if any player who walks in here is gonna get splashed with bin juice and come out smelling like particles you know they're gonna have the particles around them as if they've just walked out of a trash can so that is something that i really want to do <laughs> my only problem is i don't have any dragon's breath to make lingering potions so we need to do that right now 
we need to go fight a dragon again. Now, as it is in the end, we can see a few like kind of contraptions set up in here that we'll probably use to teleport shulkers. I have actually saved the area. So if anything does happen to break with the ender dragon, such as whatever that is up there, I have kind of saved a little copy of those so I can rebuild them afterwards if it becomes a problem. I think this is, you know, finished anyway. I think people have used what they've needed with this. So probably doesn't matter too much, but just in case, anything does happen to it and they need it, then, you know, I've got that copy. I have also been doing things in advance and I have got myself a couple of slow falling potions and the end crystals that will need to respawn the dragon alongside the glass bottles as well. So should be a pretty easy fight. One tactic I love to do when fighting the dragon is simply just take a slow falling potion and then go crazy. Let's do it. Oh man, that is, that is still extremely loud. My gosh. And here we go. Boom. Boom! Boom! Just like that. All the crystals are now done, which leads us to collect some of this dragon's breath, because this is the whole point of respawning the dragon in the first place. Glug, 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I need more! I need more! Another thing as well is we can also sell this dragon's breath, so we can definitely collect way more than we actually need. Hello! Can I have your dragon's breath, please? Thank you. Ow, ow, ow. Spicy dragon's breath. Don't do that. Don't walk into it. Pichu! 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 Bop. Bop. No! Two stacks of lingering. Well, well, two stacks of dragon's breath acquired. And the dragon has now been defeated for a second time for me this season. Time to grow brew some bin juice. Lingering potions all acquired. Now they just need a little bit of a name to them. do 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 Bin juice for a trashy store. Bin juice. Oh, bin juice. Bin juice for twinkly trash. <laughs> bin juice acquired. All that's left is to put it in the store. Hello there, my little dispensers. I'm just going to actually, I don't want two of those to go off at the same time. That's the only thing. Otherwise, that's going to use a lot of bin juice all at once. Uh, but okay, let's put some bin juice in. Maybe just four to start in each. Actually, you know what? Just one for now, because I want to show you guys, you know, what's going to happen when someone walks into the shop, right? They're going to open the doors. It's going to be great. They're going to come through and get... Oh. Oh, that didn't quite work out as I anticipated. Now my roof is smelly. All right, well, in this case, it's a little bit more complicated than I was hoping for, in, in, in which case... um. You know what? Maybe a splash potion could have just probably worked instead of the these potions. You know what? It's fine. That's something I'll work out a little bit later. For now, I actually want to put some stock in this shop because it's empty. I think I've already got everything kind of established, all the basics. So yeah, I'll, I'll work this out later. It's fine. Uh, let, let, let's get the stock sorted out. All right. So as it is, the first things that I do have are, of course, all of these tridents. We have the stone diamond ore. We have nautilus shells. And I also have a few other stock pieces that I had in mind that I was also gathering before. I made the shop, which are spore blossoms, which can't be farmed. They're not renewable. You can't grow them in any way. You have to go and collect them. So I think those can be items that are kind of annoying to get, just a little bit easier to get through Twinkly Trash. And then also some small drip leaves, which you also can't grow. You also have to acquire those from generated areas. So those are two items that are kind of a little bit more annoying to get yet can be in abundance if you're willing to take a little bit of time to find that lush cave. Something else to add to the pile is also some phantom membranes. Cause I mean, not many people really go after these, but they can be handy for the slow falling potions and for actually fixing your elytra in an emergency situation. Not many people use them, but there is a couple of people that have asked for them before on the server. So I figured, you know, why not? It's another one of those items that is probably not going to sell very well, but is there in case anyone wants it. Okay, so we have some stock. So let's kind of grab one of each for now, because I'm obviously going to put one of these on display for sale. Bonk tridents. Bonk phantom membranes. Bonk nautilus shells. Bonk diamond stone ores. Bonk and bonk small drip leaf and spore blossoms. And there we go. That's pretty much the first set of items on display in our shop. Now, personally, I kind of wish spore blossoms were, you know, flipped the other way in an item frame so they didn't look so weird when on display. But hey, they're there and, you know, it's a bit of a start. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. It's very warehousey. It's very much a you know, look very carefully at all the different items that could be displayed around the place because there is going to be more in stock here. But this is kind of like just communicating 
the basic direction that I want to go for. Now when I was actually farming for all of the tridents that I collected, there was actually a point that Scar mentioned to me that he's been wanting a trident, you know, for a little while. So I kind of prepared this trident in advance with the Riptide 3, Unbreaking 3 and Mending so he can use that through the Her Mississippi when he feels like. So, you know, my shop isn't fully open for business just yet, but I'm thinking we could potentially make a first customer sale with Scar. I have no idea what price to sell these as, but maybe we can kind of give him a little bit of a first customer discount. I don't know how much of a discount that'll be, but I'm going to let him make up the price for this special trident. First customers are important. First impressions, right? Just like how he killed me twice to sell his cookies to me. It's fine. Oh, Scar! Please, he's still here. Oh, hello. Oh, there he is. The elf with the ears. Hello? <laughs> hello! Riptide oh. here, ready for trident service. Oh, Trident service, man! I thought that, I thought Mr. Grumpy Face up there was talking to me. Mr. Grumpy Face? Oh, yeah, Mr. Grumpy Face. Oh, that's face. terrifying! What? He's staring. Why is that so incredibly creepy? Oh, I don't like that. Well, it's I creepy don't like that. and delightful at the same time, Pearl. How is this anyway delightful, Scar? It's disturbing. I've been thinking about putting my head on the guy Ryan again, just for even more creepy. Your head? Oh gosh. What do you have to sell me? I have this lovely thing. You know how long you've been waiting for a trident? You know, it's been forever since you last asked me for one of these things. Yes, and I see everybody bouncing and jumping and mm -hmm. flying around having a great time. And I'm over here like, wish I could, wish I could fly in the air when it rains. Well, I'll tell you what, Scar, now you can. You sparkly can. Sparkly creepers. You I can. To, yeah, you don't have to be sad anymore. I've got this covered for you, right? I have a lovely Riptide trident for your face ready for sale. My brand new shop, Twinkly sale, Trash. You say. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's correct. Now the and other thing is, your price be? the other thing is that's 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 the catch, right? You're technically going to be my first customer for this shop. Okay. Uh, so I don't have a price, so I'm going to leave it open to you as an honourable first customer to choose a price of your own. All right, and I'm expecting the shiny blue rocks, but hey, you know, it could be one diamond, could be, you know, two, or maybe not diamonds. It's just it's it's up to you. Honourable first customer discount. You just you just tore that up from your own garden, Ska. It's, <laughs> it's a beautiful shrub. It can act as both a table and a complimentary uh, garden piece. Okay, you're you're right. Um, look at this. It's a little tea table. Look. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Let's make this even better. All right. Look at this. All right. Spruce it up. And it's got Boom. cookies on top of it. Does it generate cookies? It doesn't generate cookies, but it could. It could generate cookies. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good deal. Do you mean, if, if I give you this trident, then I don't have to buy any cookies ever again? Oh, no. <laughs> don't, don't get uh, crazy no. there, bro. Oh, okay. Jeez, all right. Ease that's it all down, trying bro. to do to you. Okay. Do, do, do you don't think these cookies grow on trees, <laughs> do you? <laughs> I mean, yes, actually. There is literally a tree with a giant cookie on it. No, I don't see one. Mm -mm. No, not around the do other side? One? There was no, one. No, no. I it saw it. It just doesn't appear to be a thing. Mm, no, it, it was here. It was here. I, I yeah. need to... I need to check this. Hold on. Did you take the cookie down? Let's go. Wait. Where is your cookie? What? I have no idea what you're talking there about. There was a cookie there. Like, this is the other day. What? No, not that I've known of. There there was a moldy pie up there from the doughboys that live across the river. A moldy pie. Oh, that sounds gross. Okay, bro. Mm. I, 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 I can't rip you off with the, with, with the shrub. <laughs> <laughs> what go back over shrubbery? there. I'm going to root through my ender chest. Okay. You know, I'm currently poor, so I'll, I'll be with you in a moment. All right, all right, I'll be over here. I'll be with you in a moment. Okay. Mm, rip time. <laughs> Wee, ooh, I double tried that one. That was so cool. All right, I have an offer for you. Ooh, where's yes, our, where's yes. Our, where's, our, where's our negotiating shrub? We have a negotiating shrub. Mm -hmm. And the cookies. Okay. <laughs> These are my rocket diamonds. So you, oh? you will. So there's oh? ten of those. Ten. Okay. I yeah. am currently out of stock on Elven Kisses, so those are very rare. Completely sold and, out. All right. Okay. Yeah. And a very rare thing that you can put on your shelf. <gasps> hold on. Hold on. I those, have those, ears. Literally, the, one of those is mine. Oh, okay. You sure? I can't. I can't have them both. <laughs> You're earless. I'm gonna need my ears back, bro. I can barely hear you right now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. I thought you. I was I getting a bonus deal. <laughs> the double ears. And the shrub. And the shrub. Oh, and the shrub too as a bonus. Look at yep. me. Am I fabulous, Scar? Uh, Pearl, I, I don't know how to break this to you. What? She got a bit of uh, ear hair. Oh, I don't know. I don't want ear hair, Scar. I thought this was a good deal. I don't want ear hair. 
<laughs> I do have a bit of ear, actually. <laughs> you get a little bit of your hair. Oh, oh no! That's so funny. Why do I look at oddly cute though? Like, this, why do I look at the world I'm, in this? <laughs> they look great from an angle. They do. Just don't pay no attention to the ear hair, okay? It's just fine. Just get rid of that extra little, that little like head headband you have on there, and you'll be you'll be perfect, a perfect elf. Okay, I need to find a barber. Do you know a barber on Hermitcraft? I do actually. His Ooh. name is B of the Dubs. Oh, okay. Maybe I need to. Maybe I need to have a look into that. Well, I, I like this deal. The ten diamonds. Elven kiss, the, the the shrub is the the top of the cake, and the ears. I love it. I love it. Personally, I take care of that shrub. That that is a valuable, valuable thing. It's the not diamonds, even just blow. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the name. It's about the function, and the function is a table, a decorative garden piece. Mm -hmm. It's really a win-win. Okay, I, I agree with you. I will take good care of this. Thank you for your business. I can't I, believe I finally have one of these. Which one is this again? Which one? Oh, the Riptide? It's okay. the Riptide one. I need to see you do the Riptide, Riptide noise scare. It needs to happen. I can't give you Riptide there's Trident. No, there's anymore. no rain. There's water here though. Look, you have a pond. So you can literally Riptide out of this pond right now. In front of your axolotl. Did you want me to make the, the, the noise from it? Or, or do you want me to make artificial sound? Um, Whichever you feel is your inner scar when you use that trident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. That definitely works. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> oh, nice. Hold on. I need to join in on this fiasco. We gotta do the artificial Ready? sound. The artificial one? What the? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, Pearl, will your, will your shop also carry the um, the Creeper Maker Trident? Uh, yeah. So I actually have another like 10 other tridents that I can sell. So I'm probably going to put some enchants on those and sell them. Oh, yeah. I, I, I would very much like the... Um... I'm just currently saving your life right now. There's no big deal. Oh, thank you. Just Hawkeye, just Hawkeye and creepers. It's, it's You're saving my life um, for, to make up for the two times you killed me before, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were gonna walk up behind you. I, I, I saw them. They, they, mm -hmm. were, they, they were going to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. But yeah, yes, no. if, if you want to make another deal, I'll be here. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have to find some more diamonds because that was it. And that's all of them. I'm poor. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, hold on, watch this. You're definitely poor, yeah. Scott. Mm-hmm. Bro, it is it is hard times. I mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what I'm gonna feed Jelly these days. Anyway, Pearl, thank you for this. <laughs> I love it. Goodbye. Welcome. Bye. Well then, we came out of that deal pretty strong, I reckon. I mean, ten diamonds is pretty good on a diet, and then he sweetened the deal with a lovely elven kiss, a uh, a bush, and these beautiful ears on top of my head right now. Like, is it just me, or is this the most adorable thing? to see on my head. I don't know. I love them so much. Oh my gosh. I think the real question is why on earth does both a beard from Impulse and elvish ears from Scar both match my skin? Uh, I do not know. <laughs> anyway though guys, now with Twinkly Trash officially built on the server and a little bit of stock on the shelves, you know, regardless of whether or not they have any prices attached or not, <laughs> it is unfortunately time to end the episode for today. We've done quite a bit and I'm very happy to finally get Twinkly Trash established and also to make our first sale officially in the business. It's been awesome. So I've had a lot of fun. Hope you've all enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Goodbye, everybody! Goodbye! Look at this shopping district being established, though. Oh, boy. Oh, exciting stuff. See you, everybody!